Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. And in this video, I'm going to let you know how you can onboard servers to Azure with Azure Arc at scale option. Now, there is a very specific reason behind mentioning SCCM and GPO because this kind of deployment is somewhere related to an automated process wherein you can use any of these tools or any of third party tool or any other tool that you have to make sure all the servers get onboarded to Azure Arc because there is no user interaction required. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about onboarding process manually. So let's say if you have not seen that video, it will be my recommendation. You can go ahead and watch that video first because there are many aspects which I have already covered in that particular video and I'm going to use that as a reference point in this particular video. Okay. The core agenda of this video will be knowing how to onboard servers using Azure Arc at scale. Then I'll talk about the details which are related to service principles, why it is important. And I'll also talk about the difference in the script. I mean, if you will choose manual option, what is the content that you get over there? And what will be the content if you will choose Azure Arc at scale deployment? Okay. And lastly, I'll show you how to onboard a Windows Server 2019 machine and an on-prem server with Azure Arc at scale. Let's begin. The very first fundamental which I would like to address here, and that is there is no user interaction required. So if you remember in our last video, we have to go to a specific link of Microsoft and then type in the code and then sign in and then only the device or the server was getting registered. Now, all this is happening because the account with which we were signing in, it had the permission to get the machine registered. Here, what is going to happen, that kind of permission will be given to a service principal. And that service principal is going to use a client ID and a client secret. And that's it. No user interaction required. So assume that you have three servers at three different locations that you want to onboard to Azure Arc. All you have to do is sign in to portal.azure.com as an admin, select the option which says script at scale deployment, and you will get a different script. And then you can use any of the tools as I've addressed before to make sure this script gets downloaded or installed or initiated, whatever you want to name it on these three servers. Now, again, what the script will do in a nutshell, it will go ahead and download the Azure Arc connected machine agent and get that activated. The moment it is activated, your servers will start getting listed on Azure portal. The process is exceptionally simple. Just sign into Azure portal, go to Azure Arc for servers, click on add. In the last video, we have discussed about this, but here you have to select this option, which says add multiple servers and then click on generate script. Now, the first console is actually going to show you the same set of information, nothing different apart from listing the use case of Azure AD service principle, which is going to do that activation task on behalf of you. That is the only difference that you will see. The next screen is completely ideal, wherein you have to make sure that you have selected your resource group. Make sure that you have created a resource group already because this console will not give you the option to create a resource group on the fly. Okay. And then you can select region. You can select the operating system that you are trying to onboard. And then depending upon the choice of the connectivity that you have on the server, when it comes to the endpoints, make sure you have selected the respective option. In my case, everything is open. So I've selected this option of public endpoint. Now, what you have to do is you have to click on next. Now, in the next section, one more tab that you are going to see is the authentication tab, wherein it will give you the option to choose a service principle. Now, if you have already created a service principle that will show up here, you can select this drop down option and make sure your service principle is selected. Otherwise, you can click on this option that will help you to create a new one. So in short, if you have already created, you will get the option to choose one. If not, you can directly create it from here. OK, then click on next. That's all you have to do. Now, the reason why this part is very important, because this is the place wherein we are trying to skip the user interaction part. OK, once you have verified all this, just click on next. The next tab is no different. You'll again get the option to choose tags. 
you can use or create tags as per your requirements if not you can just ignore this particular part and then the next part that you will see over here will be the script itself i mean likewise in our last video a script was getting generated that is actually going to download and get the agent installed that process is pretty much same but let's break down and understand what exactly this script is doing and where exactly it has been changed so the first three lines if you take a close look it is something wherein you are getting prompted to enter your client secret now what does this mean that the process where we were creating service principle a service principle will be created for you and that is going to have a service principle client id but you have to go ahead and manually create a client secret and then populate that value here the next section is same wherein the client is getting downloaded basically a script is getting downloaded and that is getting saved into your temp folder i have shown this clearly in our last video and then from this particular script there is a specific uh, link which your which server has to reach and download the client and then get the rest of the part initiated and that is the activation of the client that means in the program files folder azcma agent.exe will be initiated and then the connect process has to be initiated and instead of typing username and password on a specific link of ms here itself you are defining client id when it comes to this one which is basically a service principle id and then the client secret that's it rest everything remains same now as i've suggested in the previous video it will be better if you will add hyphen verbos over here because that is going to give you more insight in terms of what exactly happening where exactly the setup is failing let me switch to my browser and show you all this in action and then things will make a lot more sense okay so this is my browser where i've signed in and i have all the appropriate permissions i'm going to click on servers hyphen azure arc and then i'm going to click on add now i'm going to select this option which i've shown you in the deck and i'll click on generate a script as you can see i'm getting this option of uh, some sort of information which is related to azure ad service principle if you want you can click on these articles and read what exactly it says basically it's talking about permissions which a client needs and how you can use the azure arc console to create service principles let me show you that quickly as well and then things will make a lot more sense so right now i'm in the root view of azure arc and as you can see i'm getting this option of service principles and it is showing me one of the service principles which i have created before i'll talk about this in a lot more detail once we have covered up the script part okay so i'll come back to service hyphen azure arc and then i'll click on add and i'll again click on generate a script now here i'm going to click on next here i'm going to choose my servers sorry resource group where all the servers will be onboarded then my region is east us my operating system is windows no network restrictions i'm going to choose this option of public endpoint i'll click on next and as you can see one of my created service principle is already getting listed over here but let's say this is blank for you or you're not getting any option over here then you can click on this option which says create or manage service principle now you'll come back to the same console that i've shown you from service principle option which is at the root of azure arc okay so here i'm going to click on add now it's asking me to give a name so i can give it let's say sample scope level i can define whether i want it to be operational at the subscription level or at the resource group level my recommendation is to keep service principle resource group specific again some of the very you know basic concepts when it comes to administrative i mean when it when I, one of the very basic concepts which are related to administrative aspects of how you're going to manage all the different services and how you're going to track them okay so now here i'm going to actually select my resource group so that the permission of this service principle should only be limited to this particular resource group altogether okay if you want you can type some description over here then you can type the time when this service principle secret has to be expired and here the most important part you're going to select the role now if you remember i told you that azure arc is not only about servers there are different roles there are different process or there are different services that can be managed through azure arc 
Since we are talking about Azure Arc for servers, I'm going to select this particular role. And if you guys remember in the second video, I have specifically pointed out that why this role exists in the subscription. Now, think about it. If you will assign this role to any user, the same use case that we have discussed, they can onboard it anywhere because you are assigning this role at the subscription level from the directory or at the subscription level itself. I mean, I can navigate to subscription, I can click on IAM and then I get this role assigned to somebody who is a user who is responsible for onboarding. But that assignment is something which is going to give that particular user the privilege to onboard the servers on any resource group. But practically, that's not the case over here. Okay, so now I'm going to click on create. And as you can see, it is generating client ID and client secret for me. So what I'll do is I'll copy this client secret and I'll keep it somewhere on my machine so that, you know, I should not lose it and I will be able to give this link when we'll go ahead with the deployment. Okay. So I've copied this client secret. Now I'll close this particular section from here or I can click on done. Okay. Now what you will see a sample is getting a uh, sample service principle has already been created here. Now I'll come back here and I'll just refresh this page. I just hope this setting does not go through, but it has. So I'll again click on generate a script, click on next, Azure Arc, next, Azure Arc onboarding, and I'm getting the one which we have just created. So I'll click on sample, then I'll click on next, no more changes in the tags field, and then again, I'll click on next. Now, if you will closely look at this particular section, this says enter your client secret here. Okay. Now, this will be the same value which we have just created. I'll just paste it over here. And that's it. Our script is ready. Now, I'll copy this script from here and I'll come back to my server, which I have to onboard. So, this is my server and the host name is Azure Arc hyphen art scale hyphen 2019 but there is one more change here that i would like to show you and that is if i'll again go to portal.azure.com and then i'll go to the azure arc console there is no at such server getting listed over here which has a host name arc hyphen at scale hyphen 2019 as you can see there are only these three servers, this was the one which we have onboarded in our last video, okay? So I'll come back to my machine and I'll paste my script here, which is this one. And before initiating the installation, what I'll do is I'll type hyphen hyphen verbose so that I'll get insight about every activity this script is trying to execute. Now, just a quick recap, this part will go ahead and get saved uh, the credentials of my service principal. This is going to download the script that is going to download the agent, get the installation in initiated. And once this part is completed, it is actually going to connect my machine to Azure Arc. And that's it. That's all the process is. Okay. So here I'm going to switch to PowerShell so that we can execute this script. Okay. I'll come back to my notepad. I'll copy the entire script and I'll paste it here. Now, before I do that, one more console that I would like to show you. And that is the list of the applications that exist on this particular server. It's basically a clean slate server. Nothing is here. So I'll go ahead and run this script now. This is going to take a couple of minutes. So I'll pause the video and I'll come back once the installation is completed and we'll quickly also match how much time it has taken. Okay. Perfect. So installation has been completed and it took around two and a half or three minutes for this part to get completed. So as you can see, the first section is showing us the installation is getting triggered. Once the downloaded package exists on the machine, the installation part has, in, has been initiated. And then it shows you all the different location of the log files that can be accessed. This is a section where different endpoints were accessed. And if I'll scroll down, I can show you the section where some set of information regarding 
to the machine was queried. Likewise, as you can see, operating system info and the rest of the things which exist for this particular machine. And then this is a particular section where exactly uh, the server is getting registered and a resource is getting created. Okay, so as you can see, it is showing me creation of ARM resource. And this is a subscription or this is a kind of a resource. This is the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the resource provider which is required for this service to work. Okay, and here it is. All the information is getting mentioned. So now I'll come back to my browser and I'll refresh the entire page and let's see if my server is getting listed over here and the current state should be connected. And as you can see, it is showing me now Azure Arc at scale connected. No user interaction required because here itself in the script, we have given this part which says service principal ID, client ID to be very precise and the client secret itself. So this is how exactly the Azure Arc scale process works. That means you can use this script now to get it deployed to all of your servers that you want to get onboarded to Azure Arc. And once all the servers are onboarded, you can practically come to this particular console and manage them and perform all the different kind of services which Azure Arc has to offer. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. And uh, that's it. So let's talk about a quick summary of this particular video. We have discussed about how the Azure Arc at scale process works. What is the difference between the service principles? I mean, how you can create one, how you can choose details about the service principle part. That means either you can create one before going ahead and generating the script. How you can do that, just come to the root console of Azure Arc and click on service principles and add one from here and then begin the process of generating the script or if you want, you can create it on the fly itself. Okay. And lastly, I've just shown you how to onboard a 2019 machine that was an on-prem machine to Azure Arc. In the next video, we are going to discuss about the detailed architecture about the agent and the services which are getting created and which service is responsible for what kind of process that has to be initiated on the server. Okay. So if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.